You're watching the Maryland Players Show. All right, my guest today was an All-American in high school in West Virginia. Younger brother Scott was uh, playing the major league, uh, major leagues for the Pittsburgh Pirates and Chicago Cubs. Just to let y'all know, the Bullet family is doing it. You know, <laughs> uh, attended University of Maryland from '85 to '89, uh, where her number 23 jersey is retired in the rafters. Uh, led the Terps to three ACC titles in '86, '88, and '89. Uh, led the '88 and '89 team to an Elite Eight. Uh, NCAA appearance, uh, led the team to a Final Four appearance in 89, uh, ACC regular season champs in 88 and 89, ACC tournament MVP in 89, ACC player of the year in 89, Kodak All-American in 1989, All-ACC first team in 87, 88, and 89. Career, career uh, uh, averages, 17 points per game, which is good for number two all time. Eight and a half rebounds, number five all time. 56.3% from the field, goal, from the field uh, number eight all time. 72.5% from the free throw line, number 18. Uh, total career points, nine, uh, 1,928 points. Uh, number six, that's good for number six all time, 968 <laughs> rebounds, number six as well. 220 steals, number 11 uh, in all-time history, 170 blocks, number three all time, 816 field goals made, number three all time, 296 free throws made, number 13. Hall of Fame induction for women's basketball in the 2011 class. Member of the U.S. Olympic team in 88 and 92. He got a gold and bronze medal. Uh, U.S. Uh, Fiber World Championships in 1990. We got a gold medal as well. Member of the Junior National U.S. Select team in 1986. Member of ACC Women's 50th Anniversary, anniversary Team. Member of the University of Maryland Athletic Walk of Fame. 16-year pro career. Uh, overseas and uh, played in the WNBA for six years mm -hmm. with the Mystics and uh, Chicago Sting. All-star in the Italian League, won a championship in the Brazilian League in 1990. Uh, had over 800 field goals, 1,100 rebounds, 250 assists, 250 blocks, 350 steals in the WNBA. A WNBA All-star in 1999, assistant coach for the Mystics and Hagerstown Community College head coach for Hagerstown Community College as well and West Virginia Wesleyan College, renamed a street after her, the <laughs> Ricky Bullet Street, believe it. <laughs> Two bachelor degrees in general studies and social work, a teacher at South Middle School in West Virginia as well. Vicki Bullet, welcome hey. to the show. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> Hey, thank you for joining me. It is a such a pleasure to have you. Yeah, for sure. So let's get right into it. So how was it growing up in Martinsburg, uh, West Virginia with six brothers? You know, mm -hmm. one of them was your high school coach, right? Yes, Don, my junior and senior year. Mm -hmm. How was that growing up, you know, in, in, in that household with six brothers? <laughs> well, it was it was good. Actually, I had some brothers that that pulled me along, being the only girl. I was, you know, not involved with a lot of sports, but they, they figured out I was pretty good. So <laughs> having brothers kind of helped mold me, wanting to be an athlete because they were. So, you know, you get your best steals and drills, I would say, fr from your older brother. So West Virginia, a lot of girls didn't play a whole lot of sports. And, you know, I had no choice. I wanted to be a part of the family tradition of playing basketball. So that, that was my team. My brothers were my team. <laughs> right, that's what's up. So look, when I was a young boy, elementary school, like really young, mm -hmm. it was the apartments across the street, Marlow Heights, Marlow Overlook uh, mm -hmm. apartment, Cedar Ridge now. And mm -hmm. it was this girl who used to, it was these, these, this basketball court that sat in the middle of the, of the complex. And this, mm -hmm. it was this girl, uh, her name was Leah Coward, rest in peace, Leah. Oh, and she used to, she used to fry dudes on that basketball court, <laughs> take their money and everything. So I saw at a young age that girls can compete with boys out here on this mm -hmm. basketball court. But my freshman year, 
when I was at the University of Maryland, I remember playing a pickup game early on before this, mm-hmm. you know, we got into practices and stuff. And it was a, a lot of guys from the team, the men's team, and, you know, guys around the campus who could play pickup games. And then mm-hmm. you, Dina, and Sabrina <laughs> came in and hooped with us. And this is what I never saw before. I never saw a girl Debo and dudes on the block like that before. I mean, talking trash, like you two small gets. I mean, all <laughs> of that I did. I mean, did That's you funny. always play that way? Was that always a problem? Well, to be honest with you, I, I grew up in the Boys and Girls Club. And at the time, it was just the Boys Club. So my oldest brother was an athlete. He went to, you know, a, um, a Division II school. And no girls played. I wasn't afraid to play with the, the guys. I mean, my brothers were all, you know, taller and stronger. And, you know, physically, I wanted to play. So I had to, you know, show that physicality of my game. And, and that helped. You know, any girl could say, you know, physically, they got to learn to start talking trash because they played with the boys. Boys didn't <laughs> want you to show them up. But there was a lot of respect, though, as a female playing with the boys. It could be all battle and elbows. But at the end, they shake your hand and say, you keep working. So that that was that was an asset to grow too physically. Because, you know, it's always a little side to you where you're trying to be feminine, but yet playing a physical sport. So I thank the guys for all they did. <laughs> hey, I know what? I walked away, to, away from that game with a whole wealth of respect. I was like, oh, my oh, God. Goodness. She was beast of these dudes on the block. <laughs> like, it was nothing. So it was, I had never seen that before. So I, I definitely walked away with a whole different respect for you, for sure. Oh, so awesome. you, you, mm-hmm. you at the University of Maryland now, right, freshman mm-hmm. year. What was it like uh, playing for Coach Weller? I know from the outside looking in, watching those practices. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I ain't want no part of that right there. So what was it like <laughs> what was it like going through that stuff? Well, I think in the beginning, you know, you, you learn to make that transition from a high school player to a college player. And you know, in high school, you play eight minutes, so you're really not in shape. Yeah. But I was prepared because my oldest brother was my coach. You know, running line drills, running in the off season and things like that kind of got me pa- prepared. But, you know, trying to be a student athlete and eating well was all new to me. So it was it wasn't, you know, an easy fix. You know, it took time. And, you know, Miss Waller, she was a tough coach, but she was a disciplinary coach where you grew fast from her teaching. You know, you didn't grow mad. All this lady's driving me crazy. You know, we understood early what she was trying to do for us. And once we learned that and we buy into the system, you know, running line drills, it's like, okay, I'm going to beat you, Dina, today. Maybe you beat me tomorrow. But it was always competitive. So that that made it fun. I, I remember in 89 and that run you guys went on, and mm-hmm. specifically the uh, the Elite Eight game when you all mm-hmm. won that game going into, into uh, advance to the Final Four. And I was mm-hmm. watching that game over one of my teammates, <laughs> Max Etienne's house, and he lived across from campus. And so the whole neighborhood – had college students, you know, live in the neighborhood. And I remember uh-huh. leaving from his house, the whole neighborhood running through <laughs> the streets. I mean, it was pandemonium. It was, it was, uh-huh. such, we had such a great time. It was so much fun seeing you guys perform like that. What was it like that season and, and you know, just getting to that moment uh, for you experiencing that firsthand? Well, just the experience. I, I don't think we, I mean, I think we knew that we were going to be a good team. We didn't have a big bench. We had a young, young bench. So 40 minutes was easy for us. And I think that's what steered it. You know, Christy prepared to train for 40 minutes. You know, Dina, Sabrina. And I think we were in good shape. We were in good shape. So just to having that opportunity from the year before and to have that step of stone to, to Final Four, we were the Cinderella team. I remember playing Texas. And, you know, this is the Cinderella team. I remember not playing well. But D- Dina and Carla Holmes, they, I think a piece they had 30 some points. So I don't know what they ate that day, but I wish they would have shared. But we ended up winning that game to get into the final four. And it was one of those moments that, you know, we didn't just do it for ourselves. We did it for our institution and we did it for Coach Weller because this is a highlight for her as well in her career. Yeah, that was a squad, you know, Dina, Carla, Sabrina, mm-hmm. Christy. You, I mean, yeah, that, that squad was stacked right there. So putting in all of that work, what does it mean at the end? Uh, for you to be recognized as a Hall of Fame player and, and having your jersey mm-hmm. uh, hanging the rafters forever? Well, it's a moment 
in, in your lifetime to think about all the hard work you put into the sport. And, you know, whatever accolades came afterward, it just comes down to the institution taking pride in what I could give the school. But in the big picture, I'm grateful for what they've done for me. You know, you I always tell my student athletes, you, you know, you're not you don't get to choose to go to University of Maryland. You don't get to choose to go to Duke. They select you, even though you signed that nationalism intent. You know, it's up to them to say yes or no. So you kind of want to take advantage of that opportunity. And I always tell, you know, the students, you know, I, I'm grateful, but I didn't get to choose Maryland. Maryland chose me. So and that that puts you on a pedestal in a different, you know, form of, of greatness. I'm going to say greatness because Maryland is a pride that, you know, we will take till the end of our lives. So yeah, it's it's a great feeling to have that. And always go to, to the gym and see your name up in the rafters. That's pretty, that's pretty fun. That's pretty fun. <laughs> Absolutely. It's definitely greatness for sure. So, so it, I mean, it's probably just a handful of us. And, you know, when I mm -hmm. say us, I don't mean myself. I just mean Turk players that had mm -hmm. an opportunity to play in the Olympics and, and world championship mm -hmm. and represent the country. What was that experience like? I know it's a little different than, you know, mm -hmm. playing in the pro league or playing in college with representing your country. Well, it was the first like step towards professionalism. I didn't expect to make the team. You know, Coach Weller was able to get me a tryout. You know, lo and behold, Katie Yao, the former Cody, Katie Yao was the coach. So she was hoping to get me in there and play against some good players so I can have a better senior year. She probably didn't think I'd make the team. And I didn't think either. I said, well, I'm going to go and get some experience. You know, I was one of, I am actually still one of the younger players that ever been on the Olympic team. So I went there and things were doing really well. And, you know, and coach Yao, she's, she's cheering for me too. You know, she, yeah. even though we were rivals, she was still yeah. part of the AC family. So I just worked my butt off and I was definitely in shape because we trained three times a day. So I had to be, <laughs> it wasn't easy. <laughs> So, man, then, you know, I was one of the last names that they called. And I had to, of course, pinch myself, not believing. And, of course, Coach Weller was the first person I called. I said, Miss Paul, yeah. I made the team. I made the team. <laughs> so, and, you know, and then making the team and then actually winning the gold, it just brings all your hard work and, you know, the people who support you, you know, into sight. So it, it was a moment, again, to cherish and always remember. So, so after your college career, you you uh, playing overseas for some years, and then mm -hmm. the WNBA comes on the scene. Yeah. What was that like? You know, understanding that now I'm going to get an opportunity to play in the United States in front mm -hmm. of my family and friends. They can see me play all the time. Was that a was that an exciting feeling to have that transition happen? Yes, of course. I mean, just the fact that I think the ABL had already started, but they started, and I was overseas, so I really didn't hear anything about it. But I remember Renee Brown coming to Italy and she's out here. I'm saying, what are you doing here? She goes, well, they're, you know, about to begin a WNBA season. We're out here scouting players. And I was just shocked when they called and said, you know, you've been selected to play in the, you know, the inaugural season of the WNBA. I don't think I thought it was true until I got home and then it was actually true. So that those stepping stones and all the pioneers who made this happen, you got to give hands off to all the women that play sports fighting for this opportunity to play at home. So it felt really good. It felt really good to be a part of it. So having an opportunity to coach, right? Number one, did you always want to be a coach? And then, you know, you were a teacher uh, mm -hmm. for a while. Did that, did that experience and, and playing for Coach Weller, did those things influence in your, your, your coaching ability? Well, I think, you know, when you're an athlete and you're not ready to to give up the sport, you kind of pass it down. Yeah. I've always been tuned to being an educator and, you know, teaching people things, you know, even in the classroom, outside the classroom. Um, yeah, I mean, no doubt my brother was a coach and I've always see the, you know, just the energy and the time it takes to strategize to be a coach. And, you know, I started with the smaller kids. I figured that was therapy. Let's get there, get there. Because, you know, your mentality as a professional, you may you, you have to slow down. You can't expect these kids to go out there and run a fast break after you put one line on the sheet. You got to really break things down. And I learned that through coaching and you learn about personalities and, 
and even controlling your composure because you want to win. But I also looked at the fact that I needed to teach first. Let's just continue to teach and then everything will come, you know, into light. So, yeah, coaching was definitely something I would want to do after I have to hang up my shoes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure that all the players that played with, uh, for you had a great experience and, and le learned a wealth of knowledge from someone mm -hmm. like you, just just uh, the way you experienced the game and and uh, not just phys the physical nature of it, but mm -hmm. the legal part of it too. So yeah. I'm sure they mm -hmm. learned a lot of playing for you. So you recently stepped down from being a head coach at, at West Virginia Wesley. Uh -huh. And so uh, what are you doing now with the with the Boys and Girls Club? Yes. Well, actually, the Boys and Girls Club of the Eastern Panhandle in Martinsburg, where I grew up, is the same Boys and Girls Club I was allowed to attend as a kid. At the time, of course, it was just the Boys Club. But having six brothers, you know, give me a ball cap, and I used to sneak in. And, you know, the director there, Jack Breavers, he knew who I was. He's just, go ahead, go on in. So that's where I got my start. And I knew, you know, once I finish my career, you know, move away from coaching, that I go back to the same club that gave me an opportunity to play, play the sport. And, you know, lo and behold, I'm here. You know, I'm one of the athletic directors and community outreach. And, and it's easy because everybody knows me in the community. So it's, it's really, you know, easy for me to connect with people and their children. And, you know, serving the kids is an easy job. Is just trying to relate to the adults or there's always the difficult part. <laughs> I can play with the kids all day, but I've adjusted to the transition and, and, and I enjoy what I do. So hopefully I can inspire these young people that, you know, I'm, I, I may be a little fish from West Virginia, but this is where I started. So if I can make it out and do real well, then they can too. Man, that, that's one of the highlights and, and the reason why I do my podcast, because I just like mm -hmm. to highlight those type of things and, and, and so many players, just former players, giving back to the community and doing right. mm -hmm. outside of, of their sport. And, and that's the real mm -hmm. importance of it all. So it's just great to hear something like that from you. Yeah. yeah. So look, yeah. I have one, one last question for you. Okay. Right. <laughs> so all of my viewers, they love to hear this part. Tell us something <laughs> about you that most do not know. Well, I, I think just some of my closest friends knew and I, and I saw your when you sent me the questions I said well I gotta make sure I, I explain this <laughs> at the age of 16 and I love to write I just I, I love to write and I've been writing in a journal since the age of 16 and I have over 57 journals that I constantly write in been all over the world I mean I guess when the Lord's ready for me somebody's gonna get my journals here I, <laughs> this is this is my 57th journal I have Wow! <laughs> and I write and I write and I write and a lot of people know that about me and I have an addiction for journals so I've got a chest chest of 56 written journals that are completed and I've got a chest of probably a hundred journals that are empty so I hope I live long enough to write all those journals but I write all the time. So I express a lot of things in my journals through writing. And, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a form of therapy. So, you know, I, that's something most people probably don't know. And the, I guess I, I'm allowed to say, too, I love country music. All right. <laughs> West Virginia, that's the West Virginia in you. <laughs> yeah, that's the West Virginia. By mistake, I guess. I love country music. <laughs> hey, that's what's up, man. You know what? Thank you so much for, for joining me today. And I got to tell you, when I when I met you uh, my freshman year, you were just so nice. And I couldn't believe that a person like that could be that physical on the basketball court and that <laughs> type of mentality to go out there. And it was just a pleasure to get to know you and, and just to see you you all work. I used to come to y'all games all the time. It was so oh. entertaining. And I didn't know the importance of, you know, the support for one another. I used to sit up in, right. in the top of the stands or <laughs> what have you. But I used to come all the time to watch y'all play. It was such an exciting and entertaining uh, thing. And so I appreciate uh, all you've done for the university. And, and thank you so mm -hmm. much for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. You guys take care and, right. and God bless the Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> to host a fan show or appear as a fan on a fan show, create a profile in Fan Media Network. Then look for the news page in our website and fan show resources page. Help yourself. We give show hosts a show graphic and team colors, a simple short show format, 
tips on pre- and post-production, ideas to get fans and guests on your show, Apple News distribution and show sponsorship sales and services to help featured show hosts earn money. Show hosts use our iPhone app to publish their shows. Our website supports Android users.